and in particular I want to talk about dual norms. This is also another way to generate norms from other norms. So um, the definition is like this. If uh, uh, F denotes a pre norm, what is a pre norm? It uh, satisfies all the properties of a norm except for the triangle inequality. It need not satisfy the triangle inequality. Then the function. F D of Y defined as the max over all X such that F of X equals one of Y transpose X is called the dual norm. So notice that uh, the dual norm is defined via an optimization problem. In order to find the dual norm at a point Y, you need to solve this optimization problem where you are asked to maximize Y transpose X over all X satisfying F of X equals one. <clears throat> so it's a constrained optimization problem. The cost function, namely Y transpose X is linear in Y and it's also linear in X, but the space of optimization could be a somewhat complicated space because it's a set of X's such that F of X equals one. Um, also notice that um, because uh, F is a pre norm and by homogeneity of uh, F, a pre norm satisfies this homogeneity property. So if you do like F of minus X, that is equal to minus one magnitude of minus one times f of x which is equal to f of x and so to write this optimization problem uh, as um, so this basically means that um, max over f of x equals one y transpose x is, a, is actually the same as uh, the max over f of x equals one of mod of y transpose x. So um, basically because of this, we sometimes also write f d of y is equal to the max over f of x equals one mod of y transpose x. So both are, both are equivalent uh, optimization problems. You can write it either way. So uh, this is called a dual norm, uh, not without reason. It's because the dual norm of F uh, is a norm. So uh, in order to show that, you need to show that this FD of Y satisfies the four properties we need. That is non-negativity, positivity, homogeneity, and triangle inequality. And that, that's where writing it in this alternative form, that it is the maximum of the mod Y transpose X uh, helps because um, when you take a quantity and you're maximizing it over a set of points, that's always going to be non-negative. And so clearly FD of Y is non-negative. Um, if, if, um, so the other point is that it is positive unless Y is equal to zero. In order to see that if you take, uh, so I'll just write this here, FD of Y is, uh, norm. And uh, it's non negative, obviously. And for positive, if Y is not equal to zero, then FD of Y, which is the max F of X equals one mod y transpose x. This I can lower bound by choosing a specific value of y and I will particularly choose mod of 
y transpose y over f of y. And uh, this y over f of y satisfies f of x equals 1. I'll write it up here. f of y over f of y. f of y is just a scaling and it's non-negative. So I can write that as 1 over f of y times f of y which is equal to 1. And so this satisfies this constraint. And so the max over all possible x such that f of x equals 1 is at least equal to the value y trans mod of y transpose x takes for a particular value of x satisfying the constraint. And that is this one. And this is equal to the norm y L2 square divided by f of y. And this is strictly positive because y is not equal to 0. f of y is strictly positive because y is not equal to 0. And therefore, this is strictly greater than 0. And uh, we also have that fd of 0 because if I take the 0 vector, no matter what I multiply, which x I choose here, y transpose x is always equal to 0. And so the max that mod y transpose x can achieve for over all x such that f of x equals 1 is just equal to 0. So it is equal to 0 when y equals 0 and it is strictly greater than 0 for y not equal to 0. So it satisfies the positivity property also. Sir? Yeah. Sir, could you explain how f of x is equals to max of mod y transpose x? Because we are not multiplying anything with uh, I mean, like mod of minus one, there was like nothing is multiplied to uh, x. It, it, it's trivial actually. So suppose, uh, uh, so, uh, so suppose, uh, in fact, so if you want to minimize this quantity, y transpose, suppose you solve this problem and you get an x where this is maximized. If you just get, take minus x, then obviously this quantity will get minimized when you substitute minus x. That also satisfies this constraint. And since this attains its maximum at that particular x, this will attain its minimum at minus x. So, um, so if there is an x for which this uh, quantity is negative and very large, by just substituting minus x, you can achieve the same large, pos large value, but in the positive direction by uh, replacing x with minus x. And that's why the two problems where one where you are writing fd of y equal to the max over uh, f of x equals 1 of y transpose x is equivalent to writing it as fd of y equal to the max mod y transpose x over all x such that f of x equals 1. Uh, so, so the mod has been done so that we always get the maximum value and never the minimum value. No, no, no. Even if you didn't take the mod, you will get the maximum value. Okay, so let me put it this way. Suppose let, let's let's do it by contradiction. Suppose these two have two different solutions. You'll get a different f d of y if you solve this problem instead of solving this problem. Then suppose this problem gave you a solution. Let's say, for example, the all ones vector is the solution to this problem. It gives you the max of mod of y transpose x. And suppose that happened because y transpose x for the all ones vector was like minus 100 and when you took the modulus you got the got plus 100 and that was the biggest value that the second optimization problem here could take then in this problem i can equivalently use minus all ones vector and if this was getting a value of minus 100 this will get me a value of plus 100 and that will be the maximum value that this optimization can attain so Another way, if you want me to tell it to you in, a, in yet another way, um, this, this problem that I've written here is, I can also write this as, I'll write it down here. So I can also write it as fd of y Like this because for any x for which this attains the maximum value if i take minus x this will attain its its maximum value because minus x also satisfies f of x equals one so i could even write it like this 
that is why it's okay to write fd of y to be mod y transpose maximum of mod y transpose x so does that help clarify yes sir thank you sir so this uh, this cost function itself is linear in y so it's obviously homogeneous the only non obvious property to show here is the triangle inequality remember that f of x itself need not satisfy the triangle inequality but fd of y does satisfy the triangle inequality so what we need to show is that if i take fd if i take fd of y plus z i need to show that this is less than or equal to fd of y plus fd of z that is what the triangle inequality says the norm of x plus y is less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of y so i need to show that that is this fd of y plus z is less than or equal to fd of y plus fd of z so this fd of y plus z by definition is the max over all x such that f of x equals 1 of mod of y plus z transpose times x and i can write this as um so this is y transpose x plus z transpose x and if i split this the this the, the mod of the sum of two numbers is at most the sum of the mod of the two numbers so i just write that as max over f of x equals 1 of mod y transpose x plus mod Uh, z transpose x all i've done is to split the mod in the across the two terms and that can only increase the value or leave it unchanged but it cannot decrease the value of the y plus z transpose x the mod of that um and this in turn is less than or equal to so i'm taking the maximum of the sum of two terms if i individually took the maximum of these two terms and added them up that will only increase the value because it gives me more flexibility in optimizing this uh, the 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 objective function here so this is less than or equal to max over f of x equals 1 mod y transpose x plus the max over f of x equals 1 of mod z transpose x and this is just uh, by definition this is fd of y and this is fd of z sir so we see that yeah uh, sir uh, initially you told that uh, all the properties uh, will be satisfied for prenum except the triangle inequality may not uh, satisfy may or may not be satisfied yes Uh, so but uh, you are proving that it will be satisfied no i'm so i'm showing that fd of y satisfies triangle inequality not f of y okay oh, okay okay sorry yeah so basically fd of y satisfies all the four properties needed to uh, to be called a norm and therefore the dual norm of a prenom is always a norm 